Sugar Plums, thank you so much for joining me to compare some more cards. As I mentioned last time, I did card comparisons. I am going to be using different decks for every episode because I did a poll where you guys let me know overwhelmingly that that was what you wanted. So rather than sticking with the same three decks for the entire tour through tarot, I'm going to be looking at different decks and I'm going to be using different combinations of the decks in my collection so that you kind of get to see different imagery and stuff like that. So I'm really excited to work with the three that I've chosen today. I'm going with Bad Bitches Tarot, Dreaming Way Tarot and Bohemian Gothic Tarot. There is actually an unboxing and first impressions of Bad Bitches Tarot um, and many of you will know that I absolutely love Bohemian Gothic. It is just such an awesome deck. It's a staple for me. And I've mentioned it in a, in a card slinger video before where I talked about the decks that I like to use for Samhain and Halloween. I'll leave that video below as well as the Bad Bitches unboxing and first impressions. Dreaming Way I've had for I think a couple of years now actually and I really love this deck as well. It's a great one for the collection. The imagery is just really playful and there's some very kind of like high fashion elements to it as well. So it kind of does play nicely with Bad Bitches Tarot. I think Bohemian Gothic is probably the one that is um, kind of comes apart from the other two quite significantly. It's got a lot more of a dark, obviously gothic vibe to it. So it'll be really interesting to see how these three uh, mix and match together. In the card comparison videos that I'm gonna be doing, I'm not gonna be covering every single interpretation of the card. I'm not gonna be going into the spectrum of different meanings in any kind of really intense way. I'm not trying to hit every single nail on the head. I'm just basically riffing and talking about what comes to mind in the moment for me when I look at the different imagery and stuff. So I fully do encourage you to give your own thoughts and your alternative interpretations in the comments, talk to each other, share your ideas there, let me know what you thought of the cards and what was coming through for you. Obviously there is no right or wrong answer, I'm just going ahead and giving my interpretations and just giving my thoughts on, on the cards from each deck. So we're kicking things off in this episode with the Emperor and the Emperor usually is seen as being a figure that is to do with order, structure, um, construction, authority, those kinds of themes. We often look at the Emperor as being a quintessential father figure or being representative of the Divine Masculine. The Emperor has a lot to do with authority, sovereignty, um, maybe imposing your own identity into a situation, taking control of a situation, um, or just basically coming at it on your terms. The Emperor can also be said to be controlling. Um, the shadowy side of the Emperor could be to do with his coldness, he could be a disciplinarian, he could be a little bit of a killjoy, he could be somebody that is very single-minded and only wants to serve his own agenda. There could be a lot of self-centeredness there with the emperor or an inability to feel empathy for other people and for their kind of feelings and their position. So that's kind of um, a rough idea of the positive and negative kind of sides to the emperor. Of course there is a lot more to it but in the interest of just saving time and getting into the illustrations from the different decks I like to just give a really short and sweet appraisal and also I don't want to dictate for you the terms of what every card means. You're going to have your own ideas, I have my own ideas and there'll be overlap with some of those ideas and not with others so I don't want to get too stringent um, and too prescriptive. I just want to give a very quick overview for those of you who may be newer to tarot. So with Bad Bitches Tarot we come in with this very flamboyantly dressed, very individualistic looking character who's got a really confident stance and obviously is really bold in the fashion choices that they've selected. Um, this is a really show-stopping outfit, this is something that would turn heads, this is something that obviously does represent this individual's sense of sovereignty, sense of personal style. There's obviously something sartorial going on here but there's also something that breaks the mould. Obviously Bad Bitches Tarot is a very kind of high fashion tarot deck which looks like well it is um, comprised of fashion illustrations and stuff and I feel like the Emperor is definitely a card in the deck that represents somebody going out of the box dressing against all of the norms um, putting colors together and patterns together that normally wouldn't match and also with kind of this very um, severe visible from space kind of haircut as well and this statement earring Basically what the Emperor is saying here is, you know, that, that individuality is, is the thing, you know, there is a, there's a statement happening here. The Emperor in Dreaming Way Tarot is this incredible dreamlike figure with this really rather beautiful far out looking crown. This headgear is amazing. 
The emperor is really interesting in dreaming way. It looks like a thinking man kind of position, like a philosopher's kind of classic stance where he's actually really deep in thought. Again, there is this really sartorial angle to this emperor card. The clothes are flamboyant and actually what's weird is that these, the checked kind of pattern um, overlaps between these two decks. I did think these two decks would interplay nicely, so that's really interesting. I think the Emperor in this card shows a thoughtfulness, maybe he's strategizing, he's trying to come up with some kind of a plan, and he's obviously within the midst of his empire, which looks beautiful and very kind of abundant, very green, but it's clear that he's got a lot on his mind and that he's thinking, he's planning, he's plotting away. I really enjoy the look of him, he looks very put together, he looks really um, nicely made up. The Emperor in Bohemian Gothic is actually one of my favourite depictions of the Emperor in any deck. Obviously, again, there is that incredible regalia. The clothes definitely um, can't be ignored and they really do kind of take up a lot of visual space in the image. And obviously the Emperor is kind of presiding over this big pile of skulls. So this is a really interesting, really gory kind of image, um, which is quite a departure from the other two cards. So I'll just talk a little bit about my thoughts and feelings on each of the illustrations. The Emperor in Bad Bitches Tarot, I really feel that this is about individuality and it's about the boldness that is required to go against the grain, do your own thing, express yourself in very much your own way and not necessarily care about societal norms or fashion norms or even gender norms. You know, I think it's fair to say that it, it could be taken in that direction as well. There is definitely this sense of being outside of everything else, being outside of the crowd. And I like this because to me, the way that I actually bonded initially with the Emperor card was when I started thinking about the Emperor as a figure of sovereignty. So for me, it was about somebody who decided to go off and build their own empire, who was tired of taking other people's orders, who had a vision that he wanted to bring into being. And I really felt I could connect with the emperor on that level. It was really difficult for me to connect with the emperor on other levels, but in this way, it was easy enough for me to connect with him and understand what he was all about. So to me, the emperor in Bad Bitches Tarot is quite a useful depiction because I really see that as being something that I can relate to. It's really just about doing things your own way, making sure that your life is set up the way you want it to be set up, your wardrobe is set up the way you want it to be set up, you are willing to make a statement if it's something that you believe in and you're willing to do your own thing regardless of what society might tell you. To me the emperor is kind of a rebel archetype who's had to go off and do his own thing because he didn't want to be the monkey anymore, he wanted to be the organ grinder as it were. So definitely I think Bad Bitches Tarot speaks to that in the sense that it's really about sartorial boldness and it's about just being confident and being your own person and dressing in your own way. The Emperor in the Dreaming Way Tarot, as I said, there's definitely a thinking man's vibe going on here. I feel as though he's having issues in a way. It's like he's almost battling with himself a little bit. Obviously, there is that overlap with regard to the clothing. and the, I mean, all three of them have very distinctive clothing, very flamboyant clothing, very noticeable. And I really like that about the Emperor and the way it's been approached in all three of these decks. But I feel like um, the Emperor here is definitely having issues, he's having a problem, he's trying to think something through and there could be that sense of almost kind of analysis paralysis going on or the sense that the amount of responsibility and the amount of order that he's got to keep is almost being a problem for him with this particular depiction, like he's struggling with his own responsibility and he's trying to make sure that he's going to do the right thing and he's going to make the right decision and somehow I feel like that's difficult for him and he's trying to think it through. The Emperor here in Bohemian gothic really does give me a very different vibe. First of all, um, you could say that there's a little bit of an evil despot kind of vibe going on here. I mean, this guy is clearly affluent, clearly very much about himself, and he's standing at the foot of all of these, um, well, he's got all of these skulls in front of him and stuff. I mean, that could definitely suggest that he has taken no prisoners, that he has absolutely waged war, that he has killed people to get what he wants. And that, to me, shows that more shadowy side of the emperor, which is about being uncompromising. And it's about being kind of quite cold in your approach, quite Machiavellian, if you like, in your approach to something. So I definitely think there's that to the equation as well. But I also do think that the emperor in Bohemian Gothic could symbolise um, the emperor 
realizing that his own people are being killed or something like an injustice or something is being done against people and it could be about him realizing that and then deciding that he is going to exact justice he is going to do the right thing in order to right the wrong that has been done so you could choose to see it that way as well you don't necessarily have to see the fact that he's surrounded by skulls as a sign that he's like a dictator or a despot or somebody who is committing really heinous acts, somebody who is really being ruthless to get what he wants. You could also see it as somebody who has just realised that he needs to take action to make something right. And he could be very much kind of looking off into space, thinking about what he's going to do to right this wrong and actually kind of redress the balance. So you definitely could choose to see it that way if you wanted to. And I guess I could read it in either kind of direction. But I do think it's really interesting that this very aggressive imagery of skulls is um, is in the Emperor card in Bohemian Gothic and I think that's definitely a blessing there's so many different layers to that for sure um, sometimes as I said I have read the Emperor as a figure in tarot who had to go off and do their own thing rather than be dictated to by somebody else someone who wanted to be their own boss who wanted to be the ruler of their own empire so if you wanted to you could in a way see the skulls as a representation of the death of the former versions of the emperor before he became this person who kind of rose to prominence in a very um independent way and decided to do his own thing so i definitely think the skulls could be representative of metaphorical death like death of the self as well in terms of how you could read any of these cards if they came up in readings obviously i think the bad bitches tarot depiction of the emperor could be about being bolder and more confident in the way that you present it could be about taking no shit it could be just about moving forward with confidence or finding the confidence to find your voice and own your identity. Um, it could come along for people who are at a stage where they're looking for their identity or they're trying to find the bravery to really own their voice. Or it could be for people who um, really have a strong sense of identity and might want to channel that down a particular avenue in order to um, fulfill a specific commitment or start a specific project. Um, in, any, in any event, I think it's really a celebration of the power of individuality and free expression and that's very much um, probably how I would read it in a great many um, contexts depending on the cards around it. The Emperor in Dreaming Way I think could definitely be about analysis paralysis. It could be about worrying too much about what to do and ending up in a state of doing nothing. It could be about struggling to use your power in a productive way or it could just be about having too much responsibility it could be about feeling overwhelmed by the intensity of all the different things that you've got to do or the different commitments that you've got going on or the different responsibilities that have fallen on your doorstep so i definitely think that could be a part of it i also think it could be about a planning stage a strategizing stage a stage where somebody needs to figure out what they're going to do and what order things are going to go in so the card could definitely offer advice about how how to prioritise well and how to make sure that you don't get stuck in the overthinking vortex. When it comes to the Emperor in Bohemian Gothic, absolutely you could go with the angle that it's about being ruthless, it's about being kind of cold in your approach or being very... Um, I guess unwavering and inflexible in your approach and it could definitely ask you to consider how that might be unhealthy and unhelpful for you and how you might want to look at things in a more flexible way. It could be representative of ruthlessness in general whether it's your ruthlessness or the person somebody else you know whose ruthlessness is affecting you. It could definitely also be about how important it is to allow former versions of yourself to die off so that new versions of yourself can be born and those new versions of you maybe more independent or more sovereign or more confident so I definitely think you could read it that way as well. In terms of which emperor is my favourite of the three, um, I actually really love the emperor from Bohemian Gothic as one of my favourite emperors ever and I've said that before and I will say it again. I absolutely love this depiction of the emperor, it really works for me, it's very striking, there's something about it that just really lifts itself off of the card and I very often find when I work with Bohemian Gothic that if the emperor comes up in a spread for a client it really captures me, it draws my attention to it, it really pulls me in. I think that it really gives um, a faithful mirror reflection of a lot of the most important um, pieces of the Emperor, but it also took me off the beaten track and it made me think about the Emperor in a kind of different way.
I do love the Dreaming Way tarot depiction. It does make me think about the Emperor differently. It does make me think about maybe the stress and the pressure that the Emperor may tend to be under. It makes me think about how he deals with that stress and how he lets off steam. It makes me wonder about those kinds of things and that takes me into a different sort of area with the Emperor that I don't normally find myself in. And I think the Bad Bitches Tarot Emperor definitely gives a very sturdy depiction of a lot of the main themes. Um, it doesn't necessarily challenge my existing perception of what the Emperor is all about, but I think it is a very appropriate image for the Emperor. The Hierophant is more of a religious figure in tarot, whereas the High Priestess would be considered potentially more spiritual in nature, the Hierophant is more that religious um, area of things. So with the Hierophant we're looking at things like ethics, guidance, um, obviously learning, religious learning, that kind of thing. We're looking at principles, we're looking at the discipline and the structure, the commitment and the focus that it takes um, to be involved with religion. Um, it's definitely also about, in contrast, the idea of somebody being overbearing or overbearing energies, um, difficulties relating to authority. We could look at the idea of somebody pontificating or preaching, so just the pressure to conform definitely is a shadow side to the Hierophant for sure. The Hierophant is someone who helps with your spiritual needs in a way that takes the real world into account. So it's definitely about ethics and principles, but you could also say on the shadow side that there is a potential self-righteousness there um, and maybe just kind of a pushiness there as well. So let's have a look at the imagery then from the three different cards. Um, with the Bad Bitches Tarot, the Hierophant is depicted as a woman in a kind of overcoat, a heavy overcoat with a clutch bag and she's taking a photo on an iPhone and it basically seems as though she's taking a photo of you actually which is really interesting. So that's quite an intriguing depiction. With the Dreaming Way Tarot you've got this guy in a great big kind of like Cardinal's hat type thing and a kind of uh, you know very religious looking stuffy looking coat and he's sitting in the woods on some kind of a elaborate seat and you can see that there are some keys kind of just bound up to a tree in the background there and he does seem to be asleep you could say that he's in deep prayer or deep kind of contemplation but on another on another level he could definitely be asleep i've often thought that about the dreaming way depiction and then the hierophant from bohemian gothic you've got this guy who clearly is in religious garb and he looks pretty fed up, he looks pretty irritated, maybe he's aggrieved, I don't know, I tend to think he looks agitated to be honest with you and just pissed off, um, but he could definitely just be deep in thought as well. He does seem to be holding on to some sort of script or some sort of um, written document of some kind and he definitely doesn't seem to be having a very good time and he's sitting in um, kind of like a some sort of place with elaborate windows, it looks like quite a nice place, it's quite a plush environment but he definitely is not feeling it, he's not having a good time there. So in the Bad Bitches Tarot depiction what I'm really getting first and foremost is this feeling of judgment and of observation. Um, the figure in the Hierophant seems to be kind of taking an image of me or filming me in some way. So I almost feel a little bit like she is observing me. I feel like what this figure is doing is kind of having a look at what I'm doing in a way. And that's interesting because that is often what we think of a religious authority as doing. And the Hierophant is not really the most well-loved of, um, of the cards in the deck. A lot of people have issues with the Hierophant because they do feel like the Hierophant is being judgy or pontificating or trying to tell you what's to do with your life and in a way I feel like the bad bitches tarot depiction kind of does lend itself to that in the sense that I feel like I'm being observed and therefore I feel like I'm being judged so there's definitely that aspect to it. I think it's really interesting that the decision here has been to make the figure hold a phone so the figure's obviously dressed in something that could be looked at as a modern take on religious clothing. So there's obviously a hood on the garment and it looks kind of like very shapeless and maybe a little bit sort of nun-like. So I think that's very cleverly done. But I definitely think it's interesting and there's layers to it that there's the phone there. So that definitely makes me think a lot. And the initial thoughts that I came up with when I first looked through the deck was that the feeling was about judgment and observation. And it was about having to make sure that you're watching what you're doing because there is that feeling that you are being observed in some way. So I definitely think for me anyway, it does speak to the more shadowy side of what the Hierophant card is about. 
Now with the Dreaming Way tarot depiction, I've got to be completely honest, I've always really felt like this is a dopey old man who's fallen asleep. <laughs> and that's not me trying to be like really malicious towards religious authorities or clerics or whatever, but I'm just not buying that he's having a really deep, peaceful contemplation and he's just like thinking about God and he's one with divinity or whatever. I feel like he's dopey. I feel like he's fallen asleep on the job. I feel like those keys up here are definitely kind of like you know able to be thieved that somebody's able to take them and actually i don't think just anybody should be able to take them i think he's supposed to be guarding them and i think he's just kind of fallen asleep on the job so to me maybe as well this taps into a bit of a shadowy area of things because i feel almost like this is a little bit probably to do with hypocrisy or well, that's how it is in my mind anyway so it's kind of like you know, this this figure of superiority, this figure of religious instruction is just kind of like this dopey, um, bored, uninspired person who isn't really engaging with the flock and kind of um, isn't really feeling inspired by his own work anymore. So it's almost like, you know, he's just kind of lost the spark. And I don't feel like there's anything coming from him that makes me respect him almost. He kind of seems like a bit of a bumbling idiot kind of archetype. So that's really interesting for me about my my feelings on the Hierophant from Dreaming Way. Um, but I definitely, you know, there's a small part of me that's like, yeah, okay, he could be in deep contemplation. But for me, it just feels like he's fallen asleep on the job. And that's the vibe that I've always gotten. So the Hierophant from Bohemian Gothic, I feel is kind of almost sitting um, behind the big altar in the church after a service, just getting really fed up and thinking about, um, just thinking about how irritated he is with his flock, basically. And again, I guess this really taps into the shadowy side of stuff as well, but this is honestly how I feel about these three cards. And I just have to be honest and I have to just tell you how I feel. So I think the Hierophant in Bohemian Gothic does seem just like he's really fed up with having to deal with these people that he considers to be maybe really docile and subservient and not very forward thinking because that's what they've been trained to be by the church, right? Um, but I feel like the Hierophant is this figure who's just tired of being around these people and is actually secretly and silently judging these people himself and probably is involved in a lot of stuff that he's teaching his flock not to be involved in. So, wow, there's really shadowy stuff coming coming through for me from all of these three depictions of the Hierophant. I would be particularly interested to know what you guys think and if you do see anything more positive. Uh, maybe with the Hierophant here in Dreaming Way, you could consider that there is kind of a pagan or druid element to it because he's out in nature, he's in the woods, maybe he's communing with nature, maybe there's that idea to it. I don't know, I mean I would love to know what you guys think, but I definitely think the Hierophant in Bohemian Gothic is a very pissed off little peach. And to me, I just feel like whenever I look at him, I think of him being fed up of being in this position and maybe feeling like he's not appreciated or he's not understood or maybe just he's being really judgy. I don't know, he's clearly having a shadowy time of it, that's what I think. But then it's Bohemian Gothic tarot, so there's not going to be a lot of figures doing much else in that deck apart from having a shadowy fucking time of it, because that's really what the deck is all about. In terms of how I would read these cards or how you could read these cards if they came up in readings, I think the Hierophant in Bad Bitches Tarot definitely could lend itself to asking you whereabouts you might be judging, whereabouts you might be coming at something with a bit of a superiority complex or a sense that you know best and maybe it's going to ask you um, to look at those behaviours or look at those thought patterns and consider changing them or working with them or addressing them. I think the Hierophant in Bad Bitches Tarot could also be about feeling judged in that way by other people and it could also be about um, insecurities involving being visible or um, feeling as though you have to live up to other people's expectations and there definitely could be some guidance there about how you could prevent yourself from doing that in the future and try to be more free and try to worry less about how other people perceive you. It could be about people pleasing and that kind of stuff. It could be about the feeling that you've got to perform and you've got to be a certain way way in order to be loved or in order to be considered moral. So there's a lot coming through for me with the Hierophant from Bad Bitches Tarot that could be examined. The Hierophant from Dreaming Way, um, if it came up in a reading, it could definitely suggest that a lot of the learning that you need to be doing and a lot of the insights that you require may come from nature rather than coming from books or, you know, gurus or whatever. So it could be about reconnecting with nature. The only reason I'm saying that is because of the trees behind 
behind. Um, it could definitely be about considering what inspires you in life rather than continuing to go down the same old boring pathway. And I'm saying that because, like I said, I think the Hierophant in Dreaming Way stands a high chance of actually being asleep. <laughs> and so maybe it's about awakening. Maybe it's about seeing things differently. Maybe it's about shaking yourself out of a funk, that kind of thing. That could definitely be a part of it. And I think the Hierophant in Bohemian Gothic, if it was to come up in a reading, obviously there's a million different things, a million different avenues, and it would depend on the context of the other cards as well. But I think the Hierophant in Bohemian Gothic could be to do with making sure that the people that you are learning from or taking support from or input from really have your best interests at heart. And also making sure that you have people's best interests at heart as well. I think, again, there could be some messages there about silently judging or, um, you know, feeling yourself to be superior to other people or having somebody judging you and feeling superior to you. I think it could be about the build up of stress that comes from not being honest about your feelings and not being honest about the way that you want to proceed forward. And it could also be about the way that you are approaching things like your ethics and your, um, you know, the, the policies, the principles that you live by. Are they still your ethics? Do they still make sense to you? Are they still the way that you want to live your life? If not, then it's important for you to have a conversation with yourself about how your ethics, your guiding principles, etc. need to change because you don't want to get yourself stuck in a situation where you feel like you are living with ethics and principles which really don't reflect how you think and feel. So I think it's definitely about getting yourself out of that awkward spot if you are finding that the ethics and principles you're using no longer reflect how you actually feel inside. So overall with these three Hierophant cards, I definitely think I picked up on a lot of shadow stuff. Um, I have definitely made my peace with the Hierophant over the last couple of years, but I definitely have had a really rocky time with this card. I know that a lot of people do, and maybe I just picked up on shadow stuff because of these three specific depictions. I don't know, but clearly there is a lot of shadowy stuff there for me with these three interpretations. I think the one that I like best is the Hierophant from Bohemian Gothic, but actually none of these three are necessarily my favourite depictions per se of the Hierophant. I couldn't think off the top of my head now um, what kinds of Hierophants I actually have enjoyed in other decks. I'm trying to think. I know that I like the Hierophant from The World Unknown. Uh, let me just get that out for you. Okay, so here's the Hierophant from The World Unknown, which I do consider to be a pretty tasty depiction of the Hierophant. So that's kind of, uh, I guess, a really positive hierophant for me and it notably does not involve a male religious figure in it <laughs> which uh, I guess you can you can take take that and do what you will with it um, but yeah so I think these three hierophants have definitely brought up some shadow stuff in me I don't think that's a bad thing I think all of them in their own way ask me to take my perception of the hierophant out of the box a little bit which is really good um, again I'd love to know what you guys think of these particular three that would be so interesting to me now we move on to the lovers. In tarot, the lovers is commonly considered to be a card that is about communion and community. It's about union, it's about romance, it's about friendship, it's about intimacy and the way that you relate to and connect with other people. A lot of people also do like to read the lovers as sometimes depicting the relationship that you have with yourself. I know that I like to read it that way. Other people like to see it as um, a, uh, a representation of duality. So for example, masculine and feminine and energy or yin and yang um, any of those opposites really light and dark you know love and hate those kinds of things so there is a duality vibe to it as well on the not so great side of the lovers you could say that it could be about intimacy issues it could be about a difficult or fractured relationship with another person or with yourself it could be about feeling isolated feeling lonely or feeling very codependent feeling clingy um, ending up often getting into relationships and friendships which are not healthy. So there's definitely that to the equation on the more shadowy side of things. So here, looking at these three depictions of the lovers, there's some really interesting things coming through. The first thing I want to say right off the bat is that so many people fucking hate the depiction of the lovers from Bohemian Gothic Tarot. Seriously. So many people dislike it. It's actually not even funny. Um, I don't actually mind it that much. I think I have a different perception of what's going on in the card, but I definitely will get to that. So the lovers in Bad Bitches Tarot is interesting. Um, here we have what seems to be, you know, two, two women, two female presenting people, and and um, you can see that on their tops, they have half of an angel's face each. So you still have that kind of angel vibe that normally 
occurs in the lovers where normally there's an angel between the two lovers and there you have the angel emblazoned on the two tops so you definitely feel like these two are a union they're a unit and they are holding hands um, it's a really nice depiction it's definitely not among my favorites but it, it is nice um, the lovers from dreaming way tarot the angel is between them but the angel is dressed in like some kind of jumpsuit kind of thing <laughs> like just an ordinary person um it's an interesting card depiction really i think that the guy looks pretty disheveled in a way whereas the uh, woman on the other side does look a little bit more like she's come dressed for a wedding or some kind of ceremony but the angel in the middle despite having these incredibly beautiful sumptuous very intricate looking wings is dressed you know like an ordinary human being so that's really interesting and the angel is holding onto both of their hands and the angel has um, her eyes closed so that's a very interesting depiction from dreaming way um, and then the lovers in bohemian gothic you've got this really rather vampire looking goth as fuck couple and the woman is looking away and um, a lot of people would argue that that she's holding an energy of wanting to get away she's got her hands up defensively um, and then the guy has the most sinister looking gaze on his face um, it's just a really, I don't even know what to say about that depiction really. It's not one of my favourites, but I definitely don't get the super uncomfortable vibe from it that a lot of people get, although I can understand why they are getting that vibe for sure. So I'll talk a little bit more in depth about my thoughts and feelings on each of these three cards. First of all, the three of them are so markedly different that it's you know it's pretty like it's pretty unbelievable the the gap between them um the lovers in bad bitches tarot i really do not sense that these two are lovers i feel like this is an editorial shoot and these two are actually just models and that's the vibe that i get and that's not to say that i think that you know like how can i put this it's not to say that i think these two don't look real or like they don't have real lives because they're quite model-esque it's just that I feel that it's a very staged kind of pose and I don't feel like they really know each other from the stances that they are holding. I feel like there isn't that intimacy there. They just don't strike me as lovers. So that kind of puts a little bit of a spanner in the works for me when I'm thinking about how the card makes me feel because I'm not getting a lover's vibe from them. I could potentially be getting a close friend's vibe from them definitely maybe two close friends posing for a photo i don't know why i'm not getting a lover's vibe but it's not there i'd love to know what you guys think of this but to me it just looks very editorial it looks very posed maybe it is because they're wearing matching tops i don't know maybe that looks like something that i would see in a fashion shoot but I feel like they're on some kind of set. So to me, it doesn't quite work out um, in terms of, you know, the image of the two people doesn't quite work its way into my mind as them being lovers. That being said, I really enjoy the angel that's cut into two parts on both of the tops. That makes me think of things like soulmates. It makes me think of the whole idea of meeting a mirror of yourself and how people are mirrors of each other very often. It makes me think about that feeling that you get that you have been um, walking around without someone in your life who when they came into your life you suddenly felt completed by and I've had that feeling with friends as well as with partners and it's an incredible feeling and I really also like the idea of the angel being split in two as being this idea that we carry our friends and lovers inside of us and that even when they're not around us even when we don't see them for a long time um, they are still with us in some way. So with the depiction of the lovers in Dreaming Way, I'm going to be completely honest, when I first saw this card, when I very first opened up the deck, I thought this was an image of a polyamorous union between three people. I did not realise at first that the person in the middle was an angel. So it was kind of disappointing for me when I sort of looked again and I saw the wings and I recognised like, okay, this person is not a third person in a, in a polyamorous relationship. This is the angel and the angel is kind of like harmonising their union, holding their hands hands you know and kind of um, making them come together in some way and so I was kind of disappointed by that because I thought oh my god this is a polyamorous couple and I thought that was a great dynamic but in any event um, the lovers card in dreaming way I think is really interesting in that they humanize the angel quite a lot and I think the angel can definitely be a representation of the feelings of love like the almost biochemical but also spiritual feelings of love that come into play when you first 
first get with someone and you're first in a couple with them. But then those chemicals and those strong feelings, they leave over time and they are replaced with different chemicals and different feelings and different agendas. So you don't stay with that very, very first searing, incredibly passionate love all the time. It gives way to another kind of more comfortable, foundational love and it starts to grow roots. And to me, that's what the Dreaming Way Lovers card kind of gives to me. It's this idea of the angel coming down from the sky, coming down from that very first kind of honeymoon period, if you like, of love, and actually becoming more of a force for unification in the long term between two people. And this understanding that the first throes of passion and lust may not always be as strong, but the spark can turn into something so much more deep and profound in the long term. And that is also very valuable. So that's kind of what the dreaming way says to me. The lover's card in Bohemian Gothic makes me think about the drama of love and the pretense of romance and the feeling of things not quite being real. Um, I don't necessarily see the male figure as predatory. Like for me personally, it doesn't feel that way per se. It feels more like he's being protective and territorial and it feels like she is almost not quite there in a sense so it feels to me like he's aware that she's not quite in this world and she, and he's trying to kind of protect her from what might make her vulnerable in that sense but I definitely don't see it as like really romantic I don't look at it and go oh oh my god that's so romantic this you know really protective man looking after this possibly hysterical or temporarily mad woman I don't see that as being an ideal for what the lover's card should be but I definitely have managed to find my way down different avenues with this card than just thinking about it as predatory and thinking about her as trying to get away. I'm not trying to be an apologist for this card. I'm not trying to say that I don't think tarot can be problematic in this way because I do think that. It's just genuinely I don't see this card as being an image of a predatory man and a woman trying to escape his grasp. Like I really don't see it like that. I see it as more of a dramatically overblown, intense, romantic, vampiric kind of vibe, you know, like a Dracula kind of vibe. Um, and so I kind of, I guess I read it differently to a lot of people, which I think is okay. Um, I think if the lovers from Bad Bitches Tarot comes up in a reading, then it would definitely probably be read as something along the lines of what I said, that you carry the piece of the person you love inside of you, and also that you may not necessarily end up being friends with someone forever or being a partner for the rest of your life, but that doesn't mean that you didn't have an intensely profound impact on each other. And I think that could definitely be what the lovers from Bad Bitches Tarot kind of tunes into. I also feel like there is a you and me against the world world vibe here there's definitely this feeling of two people standing together in unity and forming a wall and almost kind of agreeing to be there for each other and be allies for each other so I think that could definitely come up in an interpretation as well the lovers in dreaming way as I mentioned definitely I think feeds into the normalization and the humanization of what once was the initial spark of lust and infatuation so it's almost like love becoming more comfortable and people becoming more honest with each other and I feel like that's very much what the angel in dreaming way represents in a way to me so I think that's much more where I would come from it would be about realism in your romantic match or your friendship it would be about being open and honest and realising that you don't need to wear a pretense and you don't need to wear your persona all the time and maybe it's time to be more honest and maybe it's time to be more forthright. So that's definitely one of a number of interpretations that could come up for Dreaming Way. And I think the lovers in Bohemian Gothic, if it came up in a reading obviously dependent upon context, you could say that it is about jealousy and possessiveness and somebody being territorial or overly protective. That could be the person having the reading or it could be, the you know, an another person in the situation. You could definitely say as well that this is about um, guarding somebody who um, may be going through a really difficult time right now. You could say that it, it, it's about the Siamese kind of bubble that two people get into when they are both sharing the same headspace in a very almost obsessive and full-on kind of way. And you could look at the negative aspects of that for sure and you could definitely see that in a shadowy kind of way for sure. In terms of which one of these I would say that I like the most I think it would be Dreaming Way 
I don't think any of them would, would rank among my favourite interpretations of the lovers, but I think Dreaming Way definitely wins out on this occasion. Um, I like the way it makes me feel. I really love the angel's wings. I really love the, um, the dress that the woman is wearing and the way it's been drawn. I love the colours, so I definitely think Dreaming Way wins in this, uh, on this particular occasion for me. I'd love to know what you guys think. So the last of the four cards I'm going to be looking at today from these three decks is the Chariot. Uh, again, the difference between these three across the three decks is very notable for sure. There are three completely different energies going on here, so let's get into it. First of all, I'm going to just let you know a little bit about what the Chariot is about. Um, we very much look at it as a momentum card, so it's about pursuing something. It's often about making your way towards something. It can be about ambition, tenacity or the, the attainment of what you want basically. It can have an independence theme to it, there are lots of people that read the chariot that way um, as a statement of independence and going out there on your own terms. You can look at it as being a card about victory over your obstacles and you can definitely also look at it as a card about personal power. On the more shadowy side of things, you definitely could see it as an image of ruthlessness or aggression, um, pushing to get what you want, maybe frantically moving towards what you want in a very overwhelmed way, so putting a lot of pressure on yourself, putting a lot of stress on yourself, or maybe also just being so vehemently independent that you forget to make connections with other people or you feel like you can't reach out for help from other people. So there's a couple of ways, like a few ways in which the chariot could be read. It's definitely a card that is about moving on into the bulk of the hero's journey where you're on your way and you've got that momentum but obviously there are light and shadow sides to that equation. So with the Bad Bitches Tarot first of all we see a figure who is sitting on a really rather luxe looking car maybe like a supercar of sorts kind of thing and um, you know the car is stationary and this figure is sitting on top of the car Presumably, uh, this figure has the keys to the car and could get in and drive at any time, <laughs> but we don't know. Um, but certainly there's a stationary image here, which is interesting because the vast majority of depictions of the chariot are going to involve something a lot more like the Dreaming Way depiction, where you have got the chariot going at full pelt, there is all the momentum there. You can see that in this particular depiction of the chariot, you've got this side perspective. So it almost feels like you are an observer who's like walking on the road and you've seen this chariot just bolt past you at lightning speed. So that's a really interesting angle for the Dreaming Way Tarot. You feel as though you're so close, you can almost feel the horses rushing past your ears and you can feel the wind as the charioteer goes past you, which is uh, an exciting perspective and again quite different. And then the chariot from Bohemian Gothic, you've got again a stationary chariot because this figure which looks like this incredibly intense, angelic, demonic being in a really rather far out looking outfit with a really amazing headpiece and these black wings. And um, the thing that it's mounted on is a statue of women, stone women. So essentially that we've got another stationary chariot. So we've got two stationary chariots here, one from Bad Bitches and one from Bohemian Gothic. So in terms of the way that the three chariot cards make me feel from these particular decks, I think the chariot card from Bad Bitches Tarot is interesting because this person isn't in a hurry. This person is very calm and the pose is very chill and you kind of feel like this person has composure. This person isn't necessarily driving off at 100 miles an hour, trying to get up, trying to kind of go after what they want in a reckless way. I feel like actually there's a plan and the charioteer in this case is just kind of taking their time and just allowing things to unfold as they want to unfold. I think there's a confidence there. There may even be a bravado there in a way as well to get shadowy about it. So I definitely think that that is an interesting depiction of the chariot where I kind of feel like, um, you know, she's just kind of chilling and resting, I suppose, in a way, and knowing that you don't have to race to the end and it doesn't have to be a sprint. It can be more of a distance run where you take the time to think about how you're going to proceed before you get in the car and drive. So definitely an interesting depiction and does make me think outside the box. The Chariot for Dreaming Way is way more straightforward, way more traditional. Um, I really do enjoy this depiction of the Chariot, particularly because I love the colours. I love the um, the saddle 
on the white horse um or the you know the the kind of what's the word the tack the stuff that's on the horse anyway i like that um i love this i'm not really sure what it is i'm not sure if it's part of something the horse is wearing or if it's part of the chariot or what but i also like what the charioteer is wearing as well and i love the background too um i love the kind of fancy sort of villas or castle or whatever that is in the background so visually it's giving me a lot it is a classic image of the chariot so it definitely taps me into some of the key themes that come up the most pertinently when we look at the chariot like momentum determination um, having an independent journey towards what you want being ambitious being driven that kind of thing so that's what comes up for me with the chariot from dreaming way the chariot from bohemian gothic is you know really trippy it is a decidedly trippy image. It's a really strange depiction. You've got that moonlight in the background that really sets everything off and sort of scatters the light in really interesting places to give the image its intensity. I feel like the chariot in the Bohemian Gothic is kind of difficult to connect with. Um, there's a fear for me there. I feel like the, the figure is an apparition. And I feel almost like I've walked past this um, stone statue in a stately home and I've kind of looked and I've seen this really haunting sort of demonic angelic apparition and then maybe I've looked again and it's gone so I feel like there's something very ghostly going on here and it's difficult for me to connect this card with a lot of the key themes of the chariot I feel it connects more to other themes that aren't really as explored like for example the chariot can sometimes be about being hungry for power and allowing power to change you and it can be about how ambition can change you into the shadowy side of your nature it can overtake you and it can make you do things or behave in ways that aren't actually um, part of your ethical construct if you will so you end up behaving in ways that you couldn't really sign off on and it's because of that drive for power it's because of that desire to succeed and that actually doesn't always make people into the best versions of themselves so to me the chariot from bohemian gothic taps into that stuff a bit more it's almost like this monstrous sort of horrific figure that isn't really very relatable and you kind of feel as though you kind of feel sometimes as though the drive towards success and power can turn you that way for sure so i feel like it definitely taps into the shadow side of the chariot in that sense i think if the chariot from bad bitches tarot was to come up in a reading some of the key interpretations that i could look at would be taking your time making sure that you are not moving too fast making sure that you have some kind of plan for what it is that you want to achieve and also making sure that you are taking the time to enjoy your life and smell the roses and socialize with people you love making sure that you are not so single-minded and so focused on your ambition that you forget about the other important things in life I definitely think that could be a key interpretation. I think the chariot for dreaming way does speak to the more traditional interpretation. It could be about um, you making a break for your independence, knowing that if you want momentum, you've got to take action and you've got to be bold and you've got to be decisive. It could definitely be about making sure that you are moving in a direction that feels good for you. I think it's quite exhilarating, this particular depiction, and I think it's quite positive. So to me, the chariot in dreaming way could just be about celebrating the momentum that is coming into being for you as an individual and it could be about just really enjoying that feeling of moving ahead positively and maybe not letting anyone dull your colour, not letting anybody um, talk you out of what you're trying to do, not letting people discourage you but moving boldly ahead and experiencing the joy of doing so kind of thing. As I mentioned about the chariot in Bohemian Gothic, I definitely think it could speak to the shadow side of that desire for momentum and success. We have to look sometimes at how those things are affecting us and how they're making us feel about the people in our lives we have to look at how our desire for success is making us treat other people and sometimes we have to examine the ways in which our desire to succeed has changed us negatively over time and i think the chariot in bohemian gothic could definitely speak to those themes a little bit more which is interesting Overall, I really like all three of these chariot cards. I think it's very interesting that two of them in this particular comparison have been stationary. When I see a stationary chariot card, I find that really intriguing because obviously one of the central themes of the chariot is momentum and speed and going, you know, going, making your move, moving ahead. So 
a stationary chariot card is always going to make me kind of stop and do a double take and actually really think it through and I like that about both of these cards so I would say that both of these cards kind of have a little bit of a joint first place for me because I just like the fact that they're stationary it makes me think about things differently but I definitely wouldn't say that I don't enjoy the Dreaming Way depiction because I really do but it is very much more traditional than these two I think these two do challenge my perception of the chariot they do take me outside the box they do take me kind of off piece a little bit and for that reason I definitely think that those two are the ones that I favor at least at the, at the time of filming this anyway I have loved 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 doing these comparisons it's been really interesting and I hope that you have enjoyed listening to some of my perceptions and I would really love to get to grips with your perceptions down in the comments if there were any cards that you particularly liked or disliked let me know let me know why I'd love to um, get things from your perspective as well I always find that to be a really interesting part of the process thank you for watching there will be more comparisons soon much love for now and blessed be pop tarts